The city of Saskatoon and the public art is uh, one of the things that we cherish, but not always so public about it. And we have the community development manager, Kevin Kitchen, with us. Kevin, thank you so much for coming down. Thank you for having me, Randy. It's a pleasure. I want to talk about your role and, and what's been going on with that role over the past number of decades, probably since the city was formed, uh, in terms of public art. What can you share with us about that? Yeah, I think over the last, uh, last 15 to 20 years, we've really grown the public art program. And what a lot of people may not know is that the city of Saskatoon has been doing public art or has been in the public art business for, for 100 years. So the very first public art example of public art in Saskatoon goes back to 1921 with the Hugh Caron statue mm. um, in, in Kinsman Park. And, and that uh, was a sculptor that was commissioned, uh, came over from Italy to do that particular um, sculpture. And so over the, so I think it demonstrates that, that commemoration, public art, sculptures, statues uh, have always been part of the, the landscape in Saskatoon and that they're important. And I think in the last 10 or 15 years, the program is, has really grown. And you've seen more and more public art um, in the streets and in the public spaces uh, around Saskatoon, which I think is really terrific. Why, uh, why would a neighborhood or uh, any of the, the business corridors, why would that be an important feature to kind of add or, or maybe on a temporary basis keep changing that out? Yeah, and I'm really glad you brought up neighborhoods because, you know, funny enough, we get lots of requests for, for public art in neighborhoods. So as you know, we have a lot of public art along the riverbank. Um, but through the, gr the great work of the business improvement districts and, and community associations and neighborhoods, there are requests to have public art out in public spaces all over the city, not just uh, along the riverbank. And the reason for that, to answer your question, is people, a lot of people see the value in public art um, in terms of adding vibrancy and animation, fun, um, and also to help tell, tell stories of community. So I think it adds a lot, public art really adds a lot to community spaces that we have in Saskatoon and a lot of people see the value in that and, and public art is meant to challenge us. Uh, sometimes it's, you know, it, it, can, it can bring across a, a challenging statement it, but it's also, make, it's also about making a stop and think why is that particular artwork there, why is it here, what does it mean and sometimes it's just there to, to bring enjoyment or bring a smile to your face like, like the red ball is, is as much about fun as it is ever, anything else and it's a really great example because it's also about making you stop and think about public space. So to answer your question I would think it's about, it's about public space and shared public space and it's acknowledging that public art can help us think about our surroundings, about our neighborhoods, why they look the way they do, and, and how we interact or how we use those, those public spaces. So, you know, art and architecture, I think, are a big part of, of city living, and that's why I think it's, it's important. And as I say, we have people, people want art. They want to see art in their neighborhood parks. We have art now in Hyde Park. Um, we've just installed an artwork, a uh, sculpture that's on, on loan from the Remy Modern, and it's actually outdoors in Kensington. Park so and a lot of excitement about that. So people people are requesting to see uh, public art added to their to the landscape and to public spaces all over Saskatoon. So when there's a a, a public space, does it necessarily mean uh, public art isn't from a private artist, or are they hired by the city, or is there a process involved? Yeah, with that? that's, a, that's a great question, and um, the, the the answer is there's a there's a really a, a number of ways in which public art can be sourced or public art can be funded. We have a, we have a small budget. We have an annual budget of about $40,000 a year for, for public art. And a lot of that art you will see in the business improvement districts. Um, it's, most of it is temporary and changes up. Um, we do have an ability to work with um, our city departments who are working on large capital projects, so a major project where we can, uh, from there, from built into their budget can be a component for public art. So down the road, we're, we're working right now with Bus Rapid Transit, the BRT project, and as part of their budget, there will be money set aside, um, small amount of money set aside for, for public art, perhaps to be part of the bus stations um, and along the route, that sort of thing. But it's not just the city of Saskatoon, and, and what we're trying to demonstrate through our work is that public art really is a responsibility of others in, in the community, 
And if you look carefully around the city, you will see lots of private businesses have fantastic murals mm -hmm. on the sides of their, um, yep. the walls of, of their buildings. And, and that's absolutely terrific. And we love to see that because it adds vibrancy and color to the building. It prevents graffiti. And it also gives an opportunity for, for those artists right here in Saskatoon to get those commissions. Another terrific example, and hats off, is to uh, Dream Development here in Saskatoon. They're a major developer, and they've stepped up, and they've seen the, the, the importance, recognize the importance of public art, and they've commissioned some major pieces of public art in the new Brighton neighbourhood. So they're incorporating, with their money, um, public art as part of the design of their neighbourhood in some of their traffic circles. So that's a really great example and, and 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 you know i would invite your 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 viewers to take a tour around the university of saskatchewan campus they themselves oh, have public is. art yeah. um some fantastic public art on display if you look carefully around the campus so it's not just the, the, the city of saskatoon we like to, to model and, and lead the way but what we're really trying to show is that there's a role for for business for um uh, for other institutions in the city to play i appreciate you bringing that up because it's uh sometimes misconstrued that it's always about the city of Saskatoon that's doing this, but the door is obviously open for someone that wants to uh, contribute financially and some expertise and maybe commission something. Uh, if, if someone did own a, a building or a business or developing an area, what would they keep in mind or how would they start a process of saying, gosh, I, I like what Dream is doing, We'd like to do that too. Great, great question, and and we're 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 thinking about that as well. And we do provide we can provide some some advice to those to those businesses. So even if we don't have funding, we do have uh, a small team of one actually who can and myself and and we can provide some of that advice and help. And and a really a big role we can play is helping. Um, those businesses um, and, and developers and others c themselves connect with, with artists. And I think, you know, one of the biggest things is th 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 there can be an appetite for public art, but how do you find an artist? Who, who's the artist that we want? Uh, how do we decide, you know, which concept or which art um, we prefer? And we can help with that. We can help them develop a process. We can help them think about what public art is. So that is a service or, it, 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 yeah, it's a service that we can um, provide because at the end of the at the end of the day, it's not just about us doing it all. It's about if we can encourage others to do it, um, then we're you know we're more than happy to do so. Yeah. And does this uh, necessarily get limited to uh, ground level, or mm -hmm. you mentioned walls and murals? Can there be lighting or other types of animation that you'd look for? Abs absolutely, yeah. and, and that's really important to think, as important as sculptures are, and we have lots of sculptures, mm -hmm. if you think about it, that, that if, if it was only sculptures, then, then you're, you're only uh, uh, providing a, a arts opportunities to sculptors. And so what about painters? What about sound artists? What about light artists? So, you know, we are trying to and working on creating more opportunities for, for um, for artists to, to get commissions and to have those projects. Uh, one really interesting area that um, your question raises is we've been talking about public art and we're talking exclusively outdoors, but the city mm. of Saskatoon and others have indoor public spaces. And we've, we've acknowledged that there might be opportunities for us um, to commission or to, yeah, to commission artwork, say inside the, the Shaw Center or inside City Hall. Uh, and, yeah. and you may remember several years ago, we, we borrowed some, some fantastic artworks um, from the Saskatchewan Arts Board, which were on display in, auto, in, in, in City Hall. So, so and, and art can come from a number of sources. Sometimes it's, it's on loan. Um, we have a, an, another artwork that's on loan from um, the Saskatchewan Arts Board that's on display inside the, the Saskatoon Police Headquarters mm -hmm. um, building. So, so art can be indoors and it can be outdoors. The nice thing about indoor public art is it really does expand the type of artists and the opportunities for those artists. So it's more than, than, than sculpture, as, as great as it, as it that is. Um, it does provide for opportunities for light, for even sound and, and for painting. If we had some of the, uh, the taller buildings downtown as an example, uh, those are massive six, seven story paintings, if you will. Uh, are, are those something that you try and coordinate with areas that we don't want too many of one thing or not enough of another or trying to help something out 
but may not be more as prevalent, if you will. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think balance is a really yeah. is a really important um, aspect of it, and it's about working with the building owner. And you know, I would say that that in in most instances where we get involved is where we're asked to be involved and we you know we're asked to, to find a solution to see if the if a mural is possible at a certain location i think you know the 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 large or giant mural idea that you're talking about the really excellent example i think it's the largest public artwork and the largest mural in in saskatchewan is on the side of the uh, first nation bank mm -hmm. in downtown saskatoon that was a fantastic project emmanuel yaris regina boy who's now known all around the world uh, does does giant murals all over europe you know really started in in regina and saskatoon and so that's a really nice um, story as well. But that was a huge project involved, uh, you know, lifts and cranes, and and he was it was all done by spray paint. And but it was done thoughtfully and with with the involvement of Yellow Quill First Nation, with the involvement of the First Nation Bank, with the involvement of the of the Downtown Business Improvement District. So, yeah, really, really coordinated um, and thoughtful um, and involving involving community because we don't we don't want to go in and just do something that that community's not. Um, ready for or has not actually themselves requested and, and as I say most in most cases when when you see us or when you see public art it's because someone has either requested it or requested that that the city be involved um, in in you know commissioning or, or implementing a public art in, in a public space if someone watching did want to explore or have a conversation about that with you whether they're a community association or private property owner, would they reach out to you, or is there a process, or who would they contact? Yeah, they them? could they could phone the community community development offices or community services at right. the, at the city of Saskatoon, and and that phone call will will make its way to the to the public art program. and And it's a great point. We're always happy to talk public art with anybody who wants to talk about public art, and and we do get requests. So yeah, by all means, if if uh, you know, residents or businesses or developers out there want to talk about opportunities for, for public art, by all means, give us a call. Perfect. Kevin, thank you so much for the work you do and to your team of one. I <laughs> uh, appreciate all of that uh, you bring to the table and uh, to our city to make it more uh, lively for those who live and come here to, to visit. Thank you so much, Randy. Appreciate it. That's our show for today. I'd like to thank our guests, Kurt Persky and Kevin Kitchen. I want to thank all of you for watching. I'm your host, Randy Shabilo. We'll see you next time on Connect.